All right, y'all. We just did the Sephora sale guide as my last video, and it's become tradition at this point to follow that up with a this or that video. This or that is the extraordinarily clever name that I've given to this series on my channel because I was getting so many DMs and comments and replies asking me about two products typically, maybe three products, but discerning the differences between products that either are very similar in shade, very similar in formula, or, or both in a lot of cases. And I happen to be privileged with this massive library of makeup to refer to, and that helps me help you because I can swatch them, I can compare them, and I can give a very biased review. I can give the unbiased review by comparison, and then the biased review of like what I would choose. If we were just like sitting there having coffee and you were like, what would you recommend? I'm gonna tell you what I like better, basically. So I went on my phone, <laughs> I went on my phone. So I went on Instagram and I asked y'all for specifically Sephora sale relevant comparisons and I'm very hungry apparently. My stomach is extremely busy and keeps interjecting. If I take a break, it's going to probably be to go eat lunch. But anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. I love doing these kinds of videos because it really is like the like bottom of the funnel information that I feel like is not just the thing that's most useful to y'all, but it's also the thing that like, I it's the fundamental reason that I built my channel. Ooh, we got a lot, we got a lot, we got a lot, we got a lot. Oh my gosh, I hope we can get through these. Starting with House Labs Foundation versus Pat McGrath Foundation. It should give you a lot of information and insight into my view on these two formulas when I tell you that I don't own either one anymore. I used to own both of them and I decluttered both of them. I did message this person because it was the first question that came through and I was like, what's your skin type? And they said pretty normal balanced, maybe leaning a tad bit more dry lately. So I would recommend neither of those for you. So the reason that I decluttered them is because the Pat McGrath Foundation, I feel like it just doesn't really stand up in terms of performance to the rest of Pat McGrath's line. Her stuff is not, I wouldn't say hit or miss, but she has like very, very big strengths in terms of like textures and her powders and everything. They're just so sumptuous but she really loses me on complexion. And I don't think it's necessarily a flaw in her formulas as much as it is that it is formulated primarily for her needs and also probably first and foremost for uh, oilier skin. So with that in mind, I'm going to assume that you want like a lightweight, medium to full coverage kind of situation that does have a really nice, a natural finish that kind of can go towards glass skin because that her stuff does kind of go a little towards glass skin but I find that it's a little bit more mattified just because she typically does makeup for TV and film like she does Bridgerton for example and of course slightly more mattified satin finished skin looks better on camera. I love how I thought that I was gonna do this rapid fire. We're on the first one. The House Labs Foundation, I don't like it at all. <laughs> Mainly because the shades are just not human skin tones, okay? I know that there are people out there who say that they have good skin matches for it, but I've seen the pictures on the Sephora reviews and all TL shade, no one has a good shade match in that foundation, okay? I just don't get it. I don't get the appeal of it. And so I can't even really speak to the quality of the formula because I think the shades are so off the mark. So. If you were sitting across the table from me having coffee, I would tell you, girl, neither, okay? If you want something that has that finish to it and you are kind of, you know, balanced, maybe leaning a little bit dry, I am not kidding. Not only is this a phenomenal formula, the Bosma Foundation, but it's going to also have just such, as far as I can tell, all the different shade matches that I have seen in this range, and it is a massive shade range, they have been fantastic shade matches. I think this is like one of the most well-informed shade ranges I've seen in a long time. I haven't examined it really closely for like olive necessarily, but this is a Middle Eastern owned brand. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that like they understand that it, more than white people just exist in the world and that there's nuances to undertones and stuff. So yeah, I just, I really can't say enough about this, especially for the skin type that you specified. And I truly would skip the other two. They are. They're pretty disappointing, especially for the price. The Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Blush or Just Get the Elf Halo Glow Supposed Dupe. I don't know, I haven't tried it, but those things are so special. The Charlotte Tilbury ones, they're so special. Now, Pillow Talk is not on Sephora. You have to go to... Just hard restarted. You have to go to the Charlotte Tilbury website to get that, and I would recommend doing so. <laughs> A new lip balm now that Glossier has changed their formula 
Oi, that's gonna be like a journey. You know, I have to try some new stuff because I'm technically just still working my way through my old bottles of it, my old tubes. So now we'll put a pin in that, but I'm on it. I'm on the case. I think the whole internet's on the case. Glossier, why you did that? For whomst? Not for us. What the is stuck to me. I hope in 4K y'all could see that cat hair stuck to my nose that entire time. Rare Beauty Bronzer in new light cool shade. What? Or Mario Skin Enhancer in light. Wait, I haven't seen that. Okay, bright side. Bright side. Oh. Ooh, of course I don't have that in my hands, so I can't necessarily speak to how it's going to like interplay with your skin versus my skin versus anybody's skin. But a, just looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure that that's gonna come off as a contour or like a really nice pale bronze, but I can really, I can really like help demystify the differences between the formulas. So the Rare Beauty is going to have this really beautiful like silicone texture that's a little bit dry to the touch. Like you put it on and it spreads like a cream, but it does have more of like a hybrid finish. Whereas the Skin Enhancer from Make It By Mario, which I have sitting right here, is like a gel. And it does blend really beautifully. I am wearing it today. I love it. I'm actually wearing both of them. I'm wearing this and his stick bronzer <laughs> because I have no chill. But this is just so, 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 so sheer that it's gonna give you almost like a, a more glossy appearance. And it's also just gonna be more of like a, a haze on the skin than it is like a true bronzer. You know, that's why the two different ones exist. So I would say that you might need both. It depends on your needs. If you're just sitting with me and I'm recommending it, like if you want a true bronzer, go for the Rare Beauty. If you want something that's like more of like a, an enhancer for your foundation and you're like, I want, you know, my foundation to look different here than it does here, but not in like a way that looks like I editorialized my face. It just looks more natural. Go for Makeup by Mario. I know that's not super helpful, but it's because there's so many great products on the market that we really are splitting hairs and I'm having to use the language that was like lent to me by the products themselves. I'm just like, well, it enhances because it's an enhancer. It's not a bronzer, it's an enhancer. I feel like a freaking goofball, but that's what we're stuck with, so. Ooh, girl. Tom Ford Concealer versus Givenchy Prism Libre Concealer. You know what? Let me save you some money. I did, I haven't tried, I will be honest, I have not tried the Tom Ford. I have not, and I, I, maybe I will. If y'all, like, I keep offering it up. I keep saying, like, you know, if y'all want me to try it, I will. Crickets. No one cares. <laughs> Apparently no one cares. But I just tried this today? Oh my gosh, it was an absolute run do not walk situation getting to Instagram to deliver the good news to the people from the mountaintop. Holy crap, is this great. Okay, I have the shade N95. I'm not wearing foundation today. <laughs> I put this on kind of in a general, general, generous area here, generous area here, generous area here to kind of cover all my nonsense. The first layer went on so beautifully. The second layer went on so beautifully, it really builds. It builds in just the most gorgeous, natural, creamy, skin-looking, skin-like looking way. And it's massive, you know, it's 0 0.37 ounces. It's got this giant wand on it. I'm in love with this, this is great. And the way that it, y'all, the way that it blends in when you're putting it on, it kind of grips. Like you, you have like the brush on it and you just, you feel it kind of dry down and like grip and you're like, oh yeah, that's gonna wear a long time. Like I, I haven't done a wear test on it or whatever, but it does claim like 24 hour wear or something crazy like that. There's something really cool and innovative about this formula. I'm super impressed with it so far. And it's like $39 or something. Whereas, you know, it's like 90 or something, right? something like that for the Tom Ford. I, I don't even care if the Tom Ford is good because this is great, you know? Like, it's just so good. Like, I, I really, really like it. And I hope that the shade range proves out for everybody because this is like one of the better shade matches I've ever gotten. It's so good. <laughs> Natalie said, buy the whole store or only half the store? Well, since you and I both have half the store already, I wouldn't recommend buying the whole store all over again. Just on principle. I hate having two of something. Bosma foundation stick versus Tom Ford foundation stick. This I can actually swatch. This I can actually swatch. So we have Bosma and we have Tom Ford. I'm just going to enumerate the differences here. So the Bosma foundation has more of a satin finish for sure. And it does have less coverage. The Tom Ford foundation, the, what's the traceless foundation stick, which I have in far too light of a shade, is 
quite full coverage, so gorgeous, and a little bit more like glycerin finish on the skin, and it doesn't really dry down, which is kind of annoying. It doesn't self-set, which I would expect from a really high-end formula. Now, do I love it? I still love it. But like, I, st I think that there are too many caveats for me to recommend it to other people. Do you know what I mean? Like there are things that you can feel passionately about, but that doesn't mean that we need to legislate on them for the people. You know what I mean? My beliefs don't need to translate to your face. I don't think that you need to go spend 90 whatever dollars on this foundation when it's as finicky as it is. The Bosma has a better shade range, is less than half the price, and it is so agreeable. Like you can get so much more out of it. So I don't know, if you're looking for full, full coverage and you're okay with something not setting down and you wanna go spend $90 on this and you find a good shade in it, do you hear all the caveats? We're just making a couch of caveats at this point. Then maybe, and I do, I get use out of it, but like, it's not my favorite. Whereas like, this is one that, you know, when something has the superlative of living in my mind palace. This lives in my mind palace because it photographs beautifully. It's so easy. It's so easy to put on. You know what I mean? There's just something about it where I just don't have to think about it. I'm just like a dibbity dab. The shade mesh is incredible and the formula is weightless. Absolutely weightless on the skin. That's what's really, really cool about it. The only thing I wouldn't rec I wouldn't recommend this to Natalie of like my skin trust because like it's just not hydrating. It's not drying, it's not matte, but it's not overly hydrating the way that some people's skin needs like a hydrating foundation. And if you if you kind of want to stretch it, you might be able to with like a good hydrating primer, but like there are probably better things on the market for you than this. It's just, a it, it caters to such a wide range of skin types that like the polar ends are probably going to be the ones left out. Ooh, Pat McGrath bronzer or House Labs bronzer. Now you're getting in under the gun here because I have not reviewed these yet. I've just been trying them. So I have Naked Desire from Pat McGrath and then I have Nude Honey. They're both quite fair. Let's go ahead and swatch all three of them. This one with the House Labs. Now from a formula standpoint, while I'm swatching, I'll go ahead and tell you, the House Labs has that gel to powder suede finish and it's unique to, I don't know, it's not completely unique, but I think that they go further in that direction than other brands that I've seen. Like there is like the Make Beauty bronzer kind of does that, but it's still more of a powder than it is like a gel to powder. Whereas this has just this wild blur on the skin and has just this really interesting texture when you touch it. It just looks different in the pan from like most things that I own. Do you see that? It just looks different. And the way that it swatches is so smooth. It just kind of like self levels. Pat McGrath comes at it from the other direction where her powders are so silky. They're incredibly finely milled, but they're also emollient, but not to the point that you're gonna confuse this with a, a gel to powder. It's a powder. It just happens to be one of the most beautiful powders I've ever seen kind of thing. Oh, you've done it again, y'all. You've done it again, where you cite two bronzers or two whatever, and I swatch them next to each other and I'm like, those are so similar. Like, how did you know? So that was Naked Desire. That's the one that matches me better. Now the House Labs is a little bit, a little bit cooler. You can see that one's a little bit peacher, which is probably why I like it. And I'm not wearing it today. Like I said, I'm wearing the Makeup by Mario one. I don't remember which one I like better right now, okay? Because the names are so similar and they, I can't even tell them apart when I look at them. I mean, I can, but I can't tell which one's like deeper. I can tell one's yellower, but I can't tell which one's deeper and I don't know which one I like better. <laughs> it's like when Wayne Goss put out those, those blush duos and I was like, desert, orchid, wild, flower, coral. They were so similar. I was like, I don't know. I like them both. All of the above, you know? So yeah, it's tough to compare, but either way, there we have Naked Desire and Nude, 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 Naked, Nude Honey. Uh huh. And that's House Labs Light Level 1. And while I can't necessarily say one is better than the other because I haven't gotten enough experience with the Pat McGrath ones yet, I can say you probably can't go wrong, <laughs> okay? <laughs> More of a rose voice. And you can see the differences here in terms of what you know looks good on your skin. Like, this one's gonna go a little bit, you know, obviously deeper and a little bit more green. This is uh, gonna be a little bit peacher. And then the, uh, the House Labs is just a good bit like more like, you know, richly, I don't wanna say orange, but it does have that kind of like true orange neutral bronze to it, you know?
That's all I got. That's all I got. These are so hot off the presses. It's hard to say. Oh, you always have to ask me this every single time, don't you? House Labs Bio Blurring Powder or Kosas Cloud Set? I love them both, but I would pick Kosas, okay? Because I feel like it's more versatile. I do think that the House Labs can get a little bit too brightening before it does the job of changing the texture in the way that I want and it leaves me with a little bit less control, which might just be the delivery system. It might just be because there's the trampoline in there. I think that the pressed powder is just a more useful way to interact with this product for me with this kind of product. They're both, you know, nice lightweight kind of brightening powders, but the Kosas is more versatile. I just like it, I just like it so much. Buy from Sephora or direct from the brand itself. So that is going to differ brand to brand. Like I said in my, you know, Sephora sale guide, like Pat McGrath, girl has been putting her stuff on sale on her website lately, okay? Like go get your 30, 40% off on her website if you're gonna do better than 20%. And a lot of times, a lot of brands will have like an introductory offer and they'll also bundle. That's the other thing is like, you know, milk makeup, for example, you can bundle on their website and you can save yourself some money because milk is overpriced. It's overpriced, not for the formulas necessarily, but definitely for the packaging. I feel like it's overpriced, but you know, it is worth it sometimes to get those formulas in your hands. They're really, really good. They're like the bionics. It's just kind of about shopping product to product. You know, don't get too swept up in the Sephora of it all because a lot of times, yeah, you, especially with products that you're buying a lot from the same brand, I would, I would probably like at least check the website. Urban Decay Space Cowboy versus New Cool Feet Eyeshadow Pot. Okay, so. Can I tell you, I have the cool feet. I'm wearing it today. And okay, the only big difference here, I don't have Space Cowboy, but I do have Lithium. Let me grab that for you. Cool feet. So <laughs> something occurred to me while I was using the cool feet. <laughs> and this is only gonna make sense if you've like been on my channel for a few months, but I'll try, I'll try to like give proper context. In fact, I'm gonna pull it out. When I reviewed the Etherealized palette from Makeup by Mario, and I have two of them now, I, noticed that there was a squishy shadow in there, okay? I kind of reached my finger and I was like, why is this squishy? Why is this spicy? And y'all have to comment, y'all were like, it's not supposed to be like that. Like, what's wrong with your eyeshadow palette? I reached out and I was like, hey, what happened? And they were like, oh, let me send you another one. So they sent me another one, which is hilarious because like you cannot get this palette anymore and I have two. One with a squishy shadow in it. So we have the squishy shadow, right? And it's just, it's very disconcerting. It functions, but it's odd. And then I opened up these cool fee shadows and this is not a read. It's just, it is, is what it is. It's the tea, if you will. This is the same squishy texture. It's the same, ah, it feels so weird. But like, these are breathtaking, okay? And I bought the correct shade, the correct shade for myself. This is Bronze Brocade. I'm just gonna pull a little bit more on. Ew, ew. Doesn't really matter because, you know, it's just blending into itself. But it picks up really easily on your finger. What's hilarious is like you can do like this and it doesn't fall out, but it feels like it should. It's kind of like those Jelly Much shadows from ColourPop, but like, on a completely different plane of reality. Like those things are so such a gimmick to me and this is just such a more sophisticated execution of it. But like, y'all, I might as well just not wash the swatches off my hand from the day before when I was recommending Hourglass Ray, okay, okay, and the Orange Blossom Trio from Kaja. Like we are right there in the family of all the things that I love. This is a very easy thing for me to appreciate. And I swear this thing's gonna last you the rest of your life. Like you touch your finger and you get so much pigment, but, but you didn't, you don't feel like you interacted with the product. It feels like you touched a jellyfish, you know? And then, and then you picked your finger up, but there's product on your finger and it's beautiful and it works and it wears all day, it's gorgeous. And then, you know, I was able to put powder eyeshadow around it. In fact, I, not just powder, I used the Cool Fae and then I used the Victoria Beckham Pecan eyeshadow stick and then I used the Rose Metals palette to like really enhance the outer corner and get some warmth up here that wasn't shimmery. And then I pulled out a freaking Bobbi Brown stick on my inner corner and like everything just, no complaints. It just all worked together. So I can't say enough about the Cool Fee Shadows. I think they're awesome. I think they're really, really cool and innovative. I don't understand why they're squishy, but I'm not mad at it. 
Like, I don't really get, like, what the function of it is other than that it's kind of fun. But, like, it doesn't, it does not inhibit my ability to use it. And it also is, like, a really high-performing product regardless. And I do feel like, I mean, it is something that I can promise you one thing, you're not going to have fallout, okay? Nope. It's not going to really go anywhere you don't want it to. So, all that to say, Space Cowboy, these moon dust shadows, right, from Urban Decay. This, I, like I said, this is lithium, and Space Cowboy is going to be right there in, like, this realm of those colors, and this is going to be more, you know, it, it has the same base color, but it does shift, like, a little bit more, like, patina on top. And I'm going to just take the, the textural differences out of the equation, because I think that they both are incredibly beautiful, and I don't think that the, the difference from one being a powder and one being a kind of of squishy cream. I don't think it really changes the performance. It's just a matter of kind of like what you're after because the cool feet is it's truly like a, a beautiful all-in-one texture of eyeshadow. Whereas I feel like the Moon Dust shadows from Urban Decay are more about the like option to have the celestial kind of scattered light on top. Especially Space Cowboy's wet look. I don't think that the cool feet is wet look. It's just beautiful. <laughs> So yeah, I think that that's the main difference is especially, I think Space Cowboy more so than Lithium is gonna give you the wet look. And Coolfi, I did end up going in with Ray on top to kind of give myself a little bit more of the wet look today. Napping or eating a snack? I wouldn't recommend doing either of those in Sephora, but I'd recommend doing both of those um, you don't have to pick one. Hourglass Veil Setting Spray versus Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Setting Spray looking for hydration. Okay, so there's hydration in the form of actual skincare, and then there's hydration in the form of what your makeup looks like, okay? And I think that if you started with the milk, like underneath your makeup, you're gonna get that hydration, but I don't really love it as a finishing spray. And I would probably recommend the Kosas Plump and Juicy as your actual spray serum over the milk makeup anyway, because I just feel like it's a more functional actual like serum that gives your skin true hydration. And then as a finishing spray for the appearance and the actual like wear time of looking like your skin is really juicy, don't do the Kosas, it will break your makeup up. And I feel like there must be hyaluronic acid or something else in the milk makeup one because it it just seems to not give me like the blurred finish that I get from even like the MAC Fix Plus. And so I would say the Hourglass. Like that's my long way of saying I recommend the Hourglass for what you're talking about for like the actual appearance of it and for longevity. And even though it's expensive, I've gotten comments from people being like, you use so little of it. It lasts forever. The sprayer is not spraying out like a fix plus amount of spray. It's not going, you know what I mean? It's going, you almost don't even feel it. The first time that I used it, when I reviewed it, I think I sprayed it like 15 times on my face because I just didn't know I didn't know it was happening. I was like, I don't really know how much I've put on because like, I can't feel anything coming out of the bottle, but like it is. And it's it's an extraordinary setting spray. It took me years, years to get the perspective on exactly how extraordinary it is. Pat McGrath Flirtatious or Gucci Rosy Beige. I still can't find Pat McGrath Flirtatious. It's somewhere in this room, but I would recommend Pat McGrath Flirtatious. It's just a more sophisticated formula than the Gucci uh, blushes. It's weird that they, the Gucci blushes are not as much of a reflection of like true like luxury and I don't know, immaculate execution in a powder formula as the bronzer is. Like why didn't they just chase that feeling? Because the bronzer is incredible. And the, the blushes are really pretty, but they're just blushes. Whereas like Pat McGrath Flirtatious is, it's, it's just kind of one of the, the meanings of life, you know? It's like how we know God loves us. Cali Ray Mascara or Ami Cole? Well, the Cali Ray Mascara is a tubing formula and I can recommend way better tubing formulas than that. The Hourglass one, for example, if you're at Sephora. But if you don't really give a diddle one way or the other how it washes off, the Ami Cole Mascara is so excellent. It's so excellent. It builds in a really easy to control way. It builds length and volume at the same time. It is super lightweight, so it'll hold a curl. It's black, but it's like a nice matte black. It's just beautiful. It gives you like really, really fluttery, gorgeous, enhanced lashes. And I would wear it a lot more if I hadn't gotten that sty because I am too irresponsible to wash regular wash off mascaras out of my eyes properly. So that is why I haven't been wearing it. But like out of all the traditional formula mascaras out there, like if I had to pick one, it would be like Ami Cole, Jones Road Beauty, Tower 28. <sighs> 
those would probably be my top three. <laughs> okay, so Kosa's Dream Beam versus Supergroup sunscreen, and I'm assuming they mean the glow screen. The first real big call out here, y'all, is that the glow screen is a chemical sunscreen. It is avobenzonoctosaliodoctocrylene, and then the Kosa's is mineral. So that's a huge difference. That would be a huge differentiator for most people because if you're comfortable wearing one, a lot of times you're not comfortable wearing the other. So just bear that in mind, but I'll go ahead and swatch them because maybe it doesn't matter to you. The one thing that I did run into with the Kosas that I have not remembered necessarily having is like a huge issue with the super group, like any of the super group formulas is that the Kosas, like I got it a little too close to my eyes and I had to flush my eyes with water. It wasn't that it had like some horrible stinging to it. Although, oh, I, this is actually the older version of the glow screen. They've come out with new shades in it. So, you know, th these might not be as similar as you could achieve, but there's the dream beam and there's the glow screen. The glow screen is way glowier. The dream beam has just like a nice soft, I don't know, elegant radiance to it. Whereas the glow screen is gonna make you look a little bit more Tin Man and not in an inelegant way. It's just, it's a look, you know? It definitely has some shimmer to it. And Kosas did put out that liquid highlighter that I am not a huge fan of. So if you want that, then they do have a product for that. But if it was my personal recommendation, I would still go for the Kosas. Just be really careful that you don't like rub it directly in your eyeballs because I did and it was a mistake. Amico, y'all are always coming for me. Amico Light Mascara or Tower 28. So the Tower 28 is gonna give you this glossy elongated lash that stays pretty skinny. It's super lengthening. It does thicken the lash a little bit, but it is a glossier black. And then the Amico Lay is going to give you a much more kind of buildable rock and roll lash. That is still elegant. I'm not gonna say it's gonna like chunk the heck out of your lashes, but it's a much more matte formula and it's just as volumizing as it is lengthening, if that makes sense. I think that's the reason I don't use the Tower 28 as much is because like I do like girth. I like girth and I like matte on my lashes for the most part, so yeah, that and I'm not gonna rinse things off. Kosas Concealer versus Ilia Concealer. Kosas Concealer, that's the tweet. Charlotte Tilbury Matte Cream Blush versus House Labs Blush. Both! Now, maybe go for the House Labs if you're talking about the Sephora sale, because I do recommend, especially if you're pale like me and you wanna get the same experience that I keep raving about from the actual matte blush ones, you're gonna wanna go over to the Charlotte Tilbury website and get actual pillow talk because it's just so beautifully desaturated and gorgeous. But if that is not part of the issue for you, then I would say both. <laughs> I'm enabling you, I'm sorry. They're both so good. Oh my gosh, Patrick Top Major Skin Cream versus Westman Atelier Vital Skin Stick. When you say Major Skin, does he have something new? I thought I would I would hear about that. Patrick Tom Major Skin? No, we're still talking about the Major Skin Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo, which is a mess, as my child would say. That's a mess. <laughs> Don't do it, don't do it, it's not good, it's not good. So I would definitely go for the Westman Atelier. New Armani blush shades, I know I'm so excited about that. I was just watching one of Tom's videos last night and they were talking about like how, I, I didn't know, I didn't know that they were actually going to release them in the US because I've been looking for, I've been really checking for them and I can't find them anywhere and they're like coming uh, in three days. They're gonna be available and that's when I'm going to add to cart and check out. So I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna go for probably the palest shades that they have. House Labs Pomelo Peach versus Dior Rosy Glow Coral. I can swatch this. Pamelo Peach. Pamelo. Pamelo Peach. Pam, 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 Pamelo. Bye, bye. So my guess would be, mainly due to the formula, that the Dior is going to be a lot less like saturated on the skin. And I was correct. So this is Dior and it is quite peach. It calls itself coral, but it is quite peach. And then the Hess Labs calls itself peach and it is quite coral by comparison. So that's actually a really valuable, like if you want something that's gonna give you that richened all in one color of a pinky peach, go for the House Labs. If you're looking for something that's kind of on the level of a color adjuster, go for the Dior. Like if you want this to be the thing that you top your cheeks with and it's gonna give you like, should we do it? Cause that's what I think the Dior ones are the best for is for like taking a look just to the next level. Do you see that? The difference? And that's what they are. That's why they're kind of extreme is because they're more of like these, I, I use them in place of highlighters. They just add like emphasis to your cheek look, but 
they're not like the star of the show. I, I don't know if I've ever worn one of the Dior blushes alone. Whereas I would wear the house last one alone all day long. In beauty or merit lip oils. I actually, I'm gonna blow all y'all's minds. I kind of prefer the merit ones. I don't like all the like flavor and the smell that's in the In Beauty ones. It just feels very like juvenile to me and maybe nostalgic, sure, but still it's a little bit, I just, I don't love the experience of it. And the Merit ones are beautiful. They really are. And I rarely say a nice thing about Merit. She says, this is only half Sephora, but uh, Bosma versus Blender Cover. So this is just something that's better swatched. Blender Cover, they do have actually pretty similar finishes in the sense that they're a little bit more matte on the skin, you know? Like when they go down, they actually have like a good bit of pigment. And so the way that they dry down, it's you haven't built up a ton of product on your skin. It, it just kind of like looks like a natural finish. But the, wow, that's so funny how different those colors are. Look at that. I might've still had, I, had, I think I still had blush on my finger when I did that. I'm not sure, but either way, this is the blender cover and this is the Bosma. And the blender cover is just, it's more of like, it's higher coverage. It's not something that I would put all over my entire face. I mean, you could, I guess, but it's more of like a Westman Atelier stick, right? Where you just kind of dibby dab it, it just blurs into the rest of your skin. Whereas I would say the Bosma is just like, I, I put it everywhere. It's just lighter weight, lighter coverage and uh, more versatile. But I, this, this is like kind of been my concealer of choice lately because, and I do think of it more as a concealer because my skin has just been garbage. It's just been really bad and I need to like pull out the nuclear option and that is such an elegant nuclear option that can be worn really thinly. Like if you watch Sarah James whirl on uh, on Instagram, you know, she wears it every day just as like a little dibby dab, so. Okay, the last one here, Ami Cole or Mario blush stick. So I did buy the Ami Cole and I haven't used it on camera yet. Ooh, it's like the same color as cool if you look at that. They look like they are like little sisters. I have here the shade Desert Date. And then here I have Plumberry. We lucked out on them being similar for comparison. So Plumberry from Makeup by Mario right there. And then we have Desert Date. So formula wise, Makeup by Mario is grippier because it's a little less silicone-y and this is an absolutely gorgeous, you know, kind of silicone based formula. I'm not sure if it's actually silicone based. It feels like it is though. It has that like, it's not waxy. It's more like soft and hybrid feeling to the touch. Now, which one do I prefer? I prefer the Makeup by Mario formula. I like the creaminess of it. It's just nicer to my skin and it's like easier to get it to spread out. These are, the Ami Cole ones are made for a different skin type, okay? They are, or and skin tone. They are, like I said, hybrid finish. They're quite pigmented, like for what you're getting in, the, like very tenaciously pigmented. Like I could take this Makeup by Mario one and blend it out to almost be completely sheer if I wanted to. Whereas this one, I feel like that's kind of the extent and then it almost like self sets. And when I first used these, I didn't really get it. Like, I feel like this color is pretty on the nose. Like it's a, just a really kind of saturated on the nose, straight down the middle, kind of an ah pink. And then I saw Coco Swatches use it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. Well, like it's meant to show up and be beautiful on, you know, skin that doesn't look like mine. And there are plenty of blushes out there that work really well for like my skin tone and my skin type. The formulas are going to, you know, shear out a little bit more and be a little more hydrating and things like that. But if you're someone who has combo to oily skin and has a hard time getting certain like blush formulas to either show up on you or stay, like actually wear all day, go for the Ami Cole. Because like, while it's not made for me, it is very specifically engineered for someone else. And like, it does an excellent job from what I've seen. So. That's why I haven't really used it on camera. In fact, I used it in a vlog and I was like, oh, this is what it looks like when something isn't working. You know what I mean? And like, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there's everything right with that. Because I would say this, if something is truly meant for a certain makeup user, that's better than it trying to please everyone sometimes and not really managing to please any particular customer. So it's like when it's really not for me, a lot of times that means that it's truly for someone else and there's something really important about that. So I think that that's the case with the Ami Cole and like you cannot argue with the evenness of that application and that blur. Whereas like, you know, I worked in the Makeup by Mario and it's pretty, 
It is, but it's nowhere near as just like consistent and like idiot proof as that formula. It just happens to be like way too bold of a color and way too tenacious of a formula for me. Kind of like the Danessa Myricks ones that I tried, you know? I just felt like those colors were really on the nose and that like I couldn't get little enough of it on. It's similar to that. So I hope that this was helpful for y'all. I'm sure that we'll keep continue having more, you know, conversations about the Sephora sale and, you know, the options and stuff as we go. But this is a really good way to get like a large hunk of them out of the way. I love these kinds of videos. So thank y'all for submitting. Thank you for tuning in. I will put a playlist of other this or that videos right here for y'all because if we didn't cover it here, there's a good chance we've covered it someplace else, especially if it's an older product. So thank y'all so much for watching. I love you so much. I hope you're having a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.